Hi, my name is Brian Caffel, and welcome to the last episode of Monday Morning Data Science Ask Brian for the year 2017. We'll start again early 2018. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I'm going to answer a question that came up that someone asked, which is why are p-values uniformly distributed? under H naught, under H naught. Okay, so let's talk about some facts about the uniform density. So the uniform density looks like this. Here's zero, here's one, there's a height of one. So if a random variable follows that distribution, it's called uniform, uniformly distributed, and we might write uniform zero, one to just indicate that it's uniform on the range zero to one. We could have it be a flat line on other ranges too. Okay, so let's look at the distributions. The distribution function is the area, you know, below zero, if the probability of being uh, less than or equal to any number is zero, okay? Above zero, from zero to some point x, it's that area, okay? So we have a width of x and a height of one. So the probability that a uniform is less than or equal to say a random ver a value x, okay, is equal to x, provided that x is between zero and one. And it's, uh, the probability is zero if it's lower than zero and one if it's higher than one. Okay, so that's what the uniform distribution looks like. Also, interestingly enough, if I want to look, if I define, let's say, u tilde as one minus a uniform random variable, let's look at that. So let's look at the probability u tilde is less than or equal to y. Well, that's equal to the probability a uniform, one minus a uniform is less than or equal to y. Okay, which is equal to the probability that uh, 1 minus y is less than or equal to our uniform random variable. So remember, what's random in this quantity is the uniform random variable. Okay, so this is equal to 1 minus the probability our uh, 1 minus y is greater than or equal, or greater than, strictly greater than, I guess if I'm just being pedantic here, greater than our uniform random variable which is equal to one minus, and then this is just the distribution function, the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, or the less than or equal to or less strictly less than, doesn't change anything for continuous density. So this is, this is just evaluating this quantity up here. So it's one minus, one minus y equal to y. So the conclusion is if u is uniform zero one, then one minus u is also uniform zero one. Okay. All right. So that's some background knowledge. Oh, we well, one other thing, another interesting fact. So if, if a random variable, random variable X has distribution function capital F, then F of X is uniform zero one, and I'm I'm dealing here with uh, I, I'm I'm dealing with f continuous. You can you can prove these sorts of things when f is discrete, but because of the jumps, you have to use different arguments. And so um, let's forget about that and just deal with f being continuous. Okay, so let's look at this. The probability f of x is less than or equal to say any number, say f. Okay, is equal to because f is continuous and um, you know, provided little f is a number between zero and one, uh, because f is continuous, its distribution function, which is monotonic, is nice and invertible. So we can say that's the probability x is less than or equal to uh, f inverse of f, okay? Which is equal to, now this is just the distribution, that's just evaluating the distribution function of x, which is f, so this is equal to f of f inverse of f, okay, which is f. Okay, so here f has to be a number between zero and one. Okay, and so f of x follows the pattern that its probability of it being less than or equal to any number is just that number, where that number takes values between zero and one. If we look up here, that's what we figured out the uniform distribution function to be. So there, since the distribution functions agree, that means it must agree. And what we have is our result that if X is a random variable that has distribution function of F, then it, 
f of x is uniformly distributed. Interestingly, if you want to simulate random variables, right, if I have a uniform random variable and I take, you know, f inverse of u, a uniform random variable, that gives me something that follows that distribution function, f. So that's actually in uh, random number generation, a lot of how we generate random numbers is we first learn how to generate uniform random numbers, and then we take the distribution function inverse. So for example, um, if I have uniform numbers, and you can try this out in R, if I have uniform numbers, uh, a bunch of them simulated, and I take the quantile function from R for the standard normal, standard normal quantile function, just apply it to all those uniform numbers, those resulting random variables will be standard normally distributed. Neat. Okay. Now let's ah, get rid of that and see if I can get some more space here. Ah, there we go. Now let's talk about p-values. Okay, so let's just look at an instance where um, we have a p-value, and that is the probability of getting a test statistic as or more extreme. In this case, let's just define more extreme as greater than, greater than or equal to. Okay, so test statistic as or more extreme than the observed value where that probability is calculated under the null hypothesis. Okay, so just as a matter of calculation, if f is the distribution of the test statistic under h naught, okay, then this is simply plugging into 1 minus f, okay, of the observed test statistic, right? Because it's the, this is, you know, if this is the number that we're looking at, then the probability of the test statistic being greater than or equal to it is 1 minus the probability of it being less than or equal to, or less than, and so that's 1 minus the distribution function. Okay. Now, if we're talking abstractly, not about plugging in a specific number, but a distribution of observed test statistics over repeated sampling, okay, then this quantity, right, our test statistic under the null hypothesis, well, that's f of a random variable, right, the distribution function evaluated a random variable that follows that distribution function, so that's uniformly distributed. And we just said that 1 minus a uniform is also uniformly distributed, so we wind up with the result that this has to be uniformly distributed. Okay, so uh, that's basically the argument, uh, and you can figure it out for other cases, like if your test statistic being more extreme in favor of the alternative is in the other direction. Um, it's also interesting to note that, that you can reject and get a 5% type 1 error rate test uh, by taking p-values between any range of numbers that, uh, that equals 5%. So we usually take, if your p-value is less than 0.05, you reject from zero to 0 0.05, but because p-values are uniform, you could just as easily take numbers between 0.95 and one, and that would still give you a type one, 5% uh, type one level test. Now, quick quiz, why is that a bad idea? Because um, of the direction of your test statistic, it's going to result in lower p-values, meaning a greater, uh, 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 greater evidence in favor of the alternative. So if you were to take rejection regions like this, you, you would, yes, you would continue to have the correct type one error rate, but your type two error rate would be terrible. Um, so that's why, um, that's why we only reject for the smaller values of the p-value. But they're uh, equal, under the null hypothesis, uh, assuming everything's right, uh, you could have them uniformly distributed. They are always uniformly distributed between zero and one. Uh, you'll often see people check this in genomic applications where probably, or neuroimaging applications where you have lots and lots of individual tests, and they'll check to see if the p-values are kind of uniformish looking where they have lots of p-values. But often that's not the case, and the reason is because of dependence between the p-values, right? Like in, in neuroimaging, you know, we might have calculated a p-value here, region here, and one right next to it. There's no reason to believe that those tests would be unrelated. Okay, so that's a pretty technical ask, Brian, for this week, but still it's interesting. We have lots of courses that cover these things in detail. If you want the, this treated in its full glory, Mathematical Biostatistics Bootcamp, for example, covers this. At um, any rate, this is the last episode for this year. Make sure to sign up for Monday Morning Data Science. Uh, make sure to submit your questions, and I look forward to seeing you next year. All right, happy holidays.